From the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. House Speaker Halsin Mutri committed a clear and flagrant breach of the Constitution when he submitted a report on Friday to Governor General C.A. Smith that contained only his signature and no one else's from the Constituency's Commission. Committee member Marco City MP Michael Pintard said in a statement. That statement read in part, quote, no other member signed off on the report and it does not represent what the majority of the Commission's members agree to. Mr. Pintard noted that according to Article 69.3 of the Constitution, any decision of the commission requires agreement from no fewer than three members. Pick up a copy of today's Tribune for more on that story. Progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis and House Speaker Halson Mutri are expecting Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis to dissolve Parliament and announce an early election this week, perhaps as early as tomorrow. During a press conference yesterday, Mr. Davis also accused Dr. Minnis of playing deceptive and disrespectful games with the timing of the election. Meanwhile, Speaker Mutri on Facebook said Parliament may be dissolved as early as tomorrow and that he expects the election will be called on August 17th. Other political and government insiders similarly believe Dr. Minnis will dissolve Parliament this week, with an election date sometime in the first three weeks of August. The FNM's paraphernalia is inside the country, and the party has already identified rally dates through mid-August. The Tribune understands. The Bahamas recorded 401 COVID-19 cases from July 11th to July 17th, including 100 cases on Saturday alone, the highest number of cases recorded in one day since last October. This comes as 17 additional COVID-19 deaths were recorded on July 14th and July 15th. The number of coronavirus cases per week has steadily increased recently. Last week, the number of cases represented a 41% increase from the period beginning July 4th and ending July 10th. There were 284 cases in the week ending July 4th. The week prior, June 27th to July 3rd, saw even more cases, with 338 reported. Of the 100 cases recorded on Saturday, 83 were in New Providence, 7 were in Grand Bahama, 1 was in Abaco, 2 in Exuma, and 7 were in Leuthra. Those cases included 50 men and 50 women. After the twin nightmares of Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic, the Humane Society of Grand Bahama is appealing for donations, saying the progress it has made in helping to reduce the number of unwanted and abused animals roaming the streets is in jeopardy. HSGB was founded in 1967 and is the only animal welfare organization shelter in Grand Bahama. In a statement, the shelter said it has never received any financial support from the government for the services it provides the community. After Hurricane Dorian damaged the shelter in 2009, and killed more than 100 animals during the heavy flooding. The HSGB was hampered even more after the coronavirus pandemic prohibited the group from holding fundraisers and led to a downturn in donations. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news... A Florida man who breached the U.S. Senate chamber carrying a Trump campaign flag was sentenced to eight months behind bars today, the first resolution for a felony case in the Capitol insurrection. Paul Allard Hodgkins apologized and said he was ashamed of his actions on January 6th. Speaking calmly from a prepared text, he described being caught up in the euphoria as he walked down Washington's most famous avenue, then followed a crowd of hundreds into the Capitol. Prosecutors had asked for Hodgkins to serve 18 months months behind bars, saying in a recent filing that he, like each rioter, contributed to the collective threat to democracy by forcing lawmakers to temporarily abandon their certification of Joe Biden's 2020 election victory over President Donald Trump and to scrabble for shelter from incoming mobs. German officials defended their actions ahead of last week's severe floods that caught many towns by surprise and killed 196 people in Western Europe, but they concluded that more lessons can be learned from the disaster. As floodwaters receded today, authorities continued searching for more victims and intensified their efforts to clean up a sodden swath of Western Germany, Eastern Belgium, and the Netherlands. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A shallow plume of moisture over the area will elevate shower chances across the Bahamas. Meanwhile, the surface ridge anchored just to the north of the country will generate moderate to fresh breezes across the island.
island chains today. Boaters should remain vigilant due to the threat of possible water spat activity. Beachgoers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents along eastern shorelines. The public is advised to limit outdoor activities and remain hydrated due to the high heat indices. For the northwest Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, hot, and humid, with isolated showers and the chance of an afternoon thunderstorm, becoming a bit warm with persisting showers tonight. Winds east to southeast at 10 to 15 knots, but gusty at times. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean, but occasionally higher in gusts. For the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly cloudy, very warm, and breezy, with quick passing showers and isolated thunderstorms through tonight. A small craft caution is in effect. Winds easterly at 15 to 20 knots. Seas 4 to 7 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 75. The sun will set this afternoon at 7.59 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.31. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.